Hey everyone, this is Mike from OTG Gaming and welcome back. Today we're going to explore RetroArch overlays, what they are, how they can be used, and even how you can create your own custom overlays to enhance your gaming experience. Let's check it out. What exactly is an overlay in RetroArch? Well, overlays in RetroArch are graphical layers that you can add on top of your game screen. They can include decorative bezels, on-screen controls, or even custom game-themed designs that enhance the visual appeal of your games. Some overlays can mimic the look of a CRT, but in my opinion, it's better to use shaders to achieve that result. You can have a classic arcade bezel that makes your game screen look like the old-school arcade cabinet. Or you might use an overlay to capture the feel of a CRT television. And on top of that, you can even configure the overlay to have working buttons. Now that is pretty cool. If you want to use the overlays that are pre-baked into RetroArch, it is very simple to do. I recommend that you first go to Online Updater and make sure you have all the latest overlay files by choosing Update Overlays. Once you've updated RetroArch's overlays, applying them to your games is very straightforward. Load up your game, open the quick menu, go to on screen overlay, make sure display overlay is set to on, select overlay preset and choose the overlay you want to use and it will be applied. A few other options I would recommend setting is the overlay opacity to 100, show overlay behind menu to on and the hide overlay in menu to off. This way, you'll be able to see the overlays you've selected while still in the quick menu. So with the built-in overlays, you'll find that many of them are designed as control options for touch screens. There's a few others that are decorative for specific consoles and games, and then a few more that are pretty awesome because they're not only decorative, but interactive. You can see in this overlay that the buttons animate as I press them on my controller. I can even use my mouse to press the buttons on the screen and they will also result in the corresponding action. The overlays available in RetroArch are just a small sampling as there's a lot more to be found outside of RetroArch with a little internet searching. Some of my favorite decorative overlays are from user Orion's Angel. They've created a slew for just about every system you can think of. They pair extremely well with a very popular Mega Bezel shader pack. I also recently came across a YouTuber by the name of, I hope I pronounce this correctly, Furcho, who makes incredible interactive overlays that allow you to use save states, control the volume, activate slow-mo and rewind, and a bunch of other RetroArch features simply from the overlay. It's pretty impressive, and I'll link his channel down below so you can check it out. In order to really go down the overlay rabbit hole, I like to use Google Image Search for specific games and consoles. You can often find some pretty fantastic results. Now it's one thing to download overlays, but to really go next level and personalize your emulation setup, you should try creating your own. There is a bit of a learning curve, but for myself personally, after consulting the overlay instructions on the Libretro website, looking at the innards of various overlay files, and then discovering a Windows tool called the RetroArch Overlay Editor, I was able to make several of my own custom overlays after just a few hours of tinkering. If you want to attempt to make your own, here's some very brief instructions on how to do so. First, you need to understand the basics of how RetroArch applies overlays. For each overlay, there are the graphic files, which are in PNG format. And then there is a separate config or CFG file, which is a plain text document with all of the instructions that RetroArch needs to know how to display and interact with the image files. Now here's a very basic config file, and you can see it's pretty simple. It's basically telling RetroArch to display this PNG file as a full screen overlay. So to make a simple overlay like this one, you're gonna need a piece of graphic editing software. I recommend either GIMP or Inkscape since they are both free and open source. However, Photoshop can also be used if you have access to it. Now we need to actually run a game in RetroArch with the video settings configured to your preferred resolution and scaling. We want to go into the quick menu and take a screenshot. We're going to use this screenshot as the template to build our overlay around. 
Go ahead and pull that screenshot into your graphic editing software. I'm going to be using Inkscape and I'll proceed to build my overlay around it. Now, please keep in mind, you're going to need some basic image editing skills. I'm pretty amateurish myself, so this is not the channel to go for for a graphic editing tutorial. But once you have basic skills in place, this will start to come very naturally. Once your overlay is designed, we're going to export it as a PNG. And now we want to create the config file that we discussed earlier, and we're going to use the RetroArch Overlay Editor to do so. I'll link it down below. Once you have it extracted to your computer, we'll go ahead and open up the app. What we want to do next is go to Action and then Set Canvas Size. You want this to match the resolution of the monitor that you use to play RetroArch on. I'm going to do 1920 comma space 1080. Next we'll go back to Action and this time Set Layer Image and choose the PNG file of the overlay we just created. You should now see your overlay on the canvas. If so, all you have to do next is go to File, Save As, and name and save your config file. I typically give my config files the same name as the PNG file I just created. That way it's easier to organize. Now that we have both the PNG, the graphic, and our config file, we want to move these into the overlay folder of our RetroArch install. I like to create a subfolder for my custom overlays, but do whatever works best for you. Now in RetroArch, we'll load up our overlay and marvel at our work. However, we can spice things up even more by adding custom buttons into our overlay. To do that, I'm going to go back into my graphic editing software and I will add buttons for reset, save state, load state, and close content. Once I've added the graphics for those buttons, I'm going to go ahead and resave the PNG, go back into the RetroArch layout editor, and pull this new image in as my layer image. So to add buttons now, we want to go into the action menu and select, you guessed it, add button. Now we're going to get this transparent square that represents the hitbox for the buttons we want to add. If your button is a circle, then with this square selected, go to Actions and then set Circular Objects. But being that the buttons we created, our graphics are square, I'm going to go ahead and set them back to square objects. Now we drag this hitbox over the location of our button image on the overlay and size it to match using these sliders down here. Once it's sized correctly, we need to configure exactly what this button will do. So this is our reset button. We need the RetroArch command to trigger a reset. Now the easiest way I found to do this is to open up this RetroArch page on GitHub that shows the names of all the functions RetroArch can perform. Search this page using a single word closely related to the action you want to perform. In this case, reset. And the first hit we get looks like what we want. RetroArch reset. And the name of the command is this white text over here without the comma. So go ahead and copy this, again without the comma, and we'll go back into our layout editor and with the button highlighted, you know it's highlighted if it's yellow, if it's not highlighted it's red. But with it highlighted go to actions, set object name, and paste in the command we just copied. Now we want to follow these same steps for each of the remaining buttons in our layout. Once we're done, as we did before, we'll save our config file. We'll move it along with our PNG file into the RetroArch overlay folder and load it up in RetroArch. So yes, designing effective overlays does take some practice, a little bit of imagination, but it is a rewarding way to enhance your gaming experience and show off your own creativity. So that'll wrap it up for this video. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up, consider a subscribe, 
and be sure to leave a comment below. What are your thoughts on using overlays in RetroArch? Let me know. And until next time, happy gaming, my friends.